Hello and welcome everyone. Today we will be discussing the topic dissociated vertical deviation which is one of the uh, types of inconcomitant vertical deviation. Here it is slightly different from other types of uh, deviation where we generally see the Herring's law or the other laws being properly followed. So here what happens that the patient will have an alternating hypertropia in both the eyes so what happens if you see the patient in primary position when he's fixating with both the eyes have uh, no deviation almost less what happens with the moment you will cover one eye the eye will go into an hyper deviation and the moment you will cover the other eye it will go into again a hyper deviation so generally what happens if one eye is hyper deviated the other should go into a hypo deviation but here we see a dissociation present and both the eyes are going into a hyper deviation so it is also known as alternating sursumduction, alternating hyperphoria, alternating hypertropia, alternating sursumvergence, occlusion hyperphoria, occlusion hypertropia or double hypertropia. So these names are given because the fact that when the patient is looking with both the eyes there is no deviation and when you cover one eye the eye will go into a hyper deviation and when you remove the cover it comes into a normal position and when you cover the right eye it will again go into an hyper deviation and when removed it again comes to a normal deviation so what is happening that alternately both the eyes are going into an hyper deviation that's why the name has been given alternating sursumduction or alternating hyperphoria or even alternating hypertropia so there is a reason why it is called as dissociated because as per the laws which we know uh, in which the ocular motility is being postulated if one eye is into an hyper deviated state and the moment you take the other eye into cover that should go into an hypo deviation so but this is not what is happening in this case in this case both the eyes are going into an hyper deviation that's why it is called as dissociated vertical deviation looking on to the etiology or the causes the causes are not yet very well developed or very well understood so there have been many of the reasons or causes being given by different uh, scientists and different researchers and they have come up with these much of possible reasons one of the reasons given by Belshawski is the positive and negative subcortical vertical divergence center so what Belshawski says that the moment you try to fixate with the eye for the fixation generally there is an innervation coming to the uh, muscles of the inner your elevator muscles so what happens the elevator muscles are getting uh, innervations and to overcompensate it there is uh, again a contradictory innervation to the depressor muscle but because the eye under cover is not getting any fixation clue so that will take the innervation from what the elevating muscles are getting and that will go into a state of hyper deviation again there is a theory of imbalance in binocular stimulation which says that because there is a imbalance in the binocular stimuli which is being perceived by both the eyes that could also lead to a different amount of innervation given to both the eyes also there is again one more theory which says Brodsky's theory uh, which says that it is a vestigial dorsal light reflex which is present in the lower animal so now this has been a remnant into humans as well so many times what happens that the moment you cover one eye to get the fixation the eye will go into a hyper deviated state so that it can attend a fixation other theories are nothing but your theory of bilateral paralysis or paralysis of the depressor muscle what happens that when both the depressor muscles are uh, paris, uh, paralysis so just when both the eyes are open because of the fusion they are kept into the primary state but the moment you will cover one eye fusion will break and the eye will go into a hyper deviated state and when you do alternately you will find that the elevation uh, is going in both the eyes theory of defective midbrain stimuli this says that the part from where the innervations are coming to keep both the eyes into a same position are rather defective because of which both of them are going into an hyper deviated state other theories are of theory of two monocular conjugate mechanism and binocular mechanism theory of defective monocular nasal retina quadrant stimuli and guidance theory now these theories are not very well explained or not very well taken into account the theory which are most commonly taken as the accepted theories are one is Belshawski's the other one is Brodsky's theory 
coming on to the clinical features when you say the deviation is as explained earlier it is a type of alternating uh, hyper deviation in both the eyes so what you will see that whenever you close or rather uh, occlude one eye the eye will eye under cover will go into an hyper deviated state and the moment you take out the occlusion it will come back into the normal place it will happen in both the eyes simultaneously so association it is commonly associated with essential infantile esotropia infantile exotropia exocycloduction and latent nystagmus so one thing common in all of these cases is that abnormal binocular vision which is being happening leading to the abnormal development of the subcortical centers also you will see head posture present in 33% of the cases now these cases are generally the patient who were unable to develop the sensory adaptation and because of the lack of sensory adaptation they have to adapt motor so that in bid to keep the diplopia at its minimal so what happens that this patient will uh, try to uh, in uh, rather what we say uh, depress their uh, chin a bit so as to decrease the amount of diplopia so this is commonly seen in 33% of the cases laterality when we say it is mostly bilateral and very rare that you will see a monocular case in such patient so this is again a very simple example if you see the moment we covered the right eye the right eye went to an hyper deviation and when we covered the left eye the left eye went to an hyper deviation so monocular dissociated hyper deviation and alternating subduction are the two variants which are seen binocular vision and sensory adaptation when we say the commonly we see there is a suppression present and this suppression is more of a central suppression so what happens that the central area where diplopia is more uh, in nature the patient will have a suppression or a suppression scotoma whereas the patient will have a peripheral fusion if the patient has less than 4 prism diopter of deviation so what happens when the deviation is less than 4 prism diopter you can still have a peripheral fusion present so the patient will give you that the peripherally he has a very less amount of diplopia but when he looks at the primary gaze he has more diplopia present an absolute central scotoma is very commonly seen in such cases so you will see that there is a central scotoma which is present so this is how you do a diagnosis of a patient with uh, your uh, cover and cover test so what you do is you cover the eye and uh, then you see the eye under cover is it going into an hyper deviation or hypo deviation so if you see here the patient is okay so this is a cover and cover uh, test which is showing you how hypo deviation is happening this is not exactly a dissociated vertical deviation so generally we do a hypo uh, cover and cover test
So head tilt test is also commonly seen to exclude if there is any uh, to identify which muscle is exactly paralyzed. So it could be it is rather to find out if inferior oblique, superior oblique, inferior rectus or superior rectus, which one on which eye is exactly the cause of this deviation. Red glass test is generally used to in, uh, see the diplopia because many times what happens that we need to identify at which particular gaze the patient is having the most problem so what you do is you put a red glass in front of one eye and then you ask the patient to look at a light and see uh, what he exactly has to say so if the patient has any phoria present so he will say there is a presence of diplopia and uh, in case of hyper deviation the patient will say the red light is uh, below the white light and in case of hyper deviation the patient will say the red light is above the white light so this is uh, generally to elicit diplopia in cases with your dissociated vertical deviation demonstration of Belshawski's phenomenon so Belshawski what he said that this phenomenon is generally seen in patient with your dissociated, dissociated vertical deviation so it is all depending on your uh, subcortical innervation so these are the four uh, depictions which show so when you occlude the eye the patient will have an hyper deviation as we commonly see uh, in your dissociated vertical deviation but the moment you will cover that eye with a neutral density filter what will happen because of the neutral density filter the amount of light coming to the eye will get reduced so to make the particular uh, fixation or to in a bid to have the fixation properly there will be a uh, innervation of the uh, elevator muscles in the eye which is trying to maintain the fixation at the same time also there will be innervation to the inferior uh, or the depressing muscle to keep the eye into a straight position but because of the innervation of this inferior muscles that same innervation will go to the other eye leading to the eye go into a hypodeviated state or a depressed state as you in, uh, decrease the amount of uh, neutral density filter and the vision starts gaining back or rather the amount of light is increasing slowly the eye will again come into the primary position and the moment the neutral density filter is almost taken off again the eye will go into a hyper deviated state so this explains that the DVD or rather the dissociated vertical deviation is a reason because of the f uh, fixation uh, criteria or rather to fixate with the eye which is not, not, not occluded and the innervation resulting because of the fixation. So this is how the Belshawski's theory of uh, positive and negative uh, cortical centers was actually explained so Belchowski's phenomenon is very well uh, explained or demonstrated into your dissociated vertical deviation patients so this is how you measure DVD so if you see when you cover the patient's eye it is going on hyper deviation state and it comes back into normal so what you do is you do a prism based down under occluder test so you put a prism in that eye based down and then you do it so if you see again so this is actually the patient now has been done a surgery to reduce the amount of your uh, hyper deviation so differential diagnosis when we say how do we differentially diagnose with an inferior oblique overaction and dissociated vertical deviation so the elevation when you say in inferior oblique it will be maximal adduction not an abduction but in DVD it will be present in all the direction of gazes superior oblique whenever you will say it will it may overact or may not but in inferior oblique overaction it will always underact V pattern is not seen in your dissociated vertical deviation but it is often present in inferior oblique overaction your pseudoparesis of superior rectus is absent in DVD whereas it is present into your inferior oblique overaction in cycloduction on refixation will be present in DVD patients whereas it is absent in your inferior oblique overaction your saccadic velocity is 10 to 20 uh, 200 degree per second whereas it is much more quicker in your inferior oblique overaction latent nigma, nystagmus will be seen in patient with DVD but it is absent in inferior oblique overaction and Belshawski's phenomenon which I said that subcortical uh, uh, innervation it is only seen in DVD and not seen in inferior oblique overaction 
so treatment when we say the treatment of this is your non surgical you can only ask the patient to change fixation pattern or by patching the eye one eye which is affected uh, which can be done either by optical means or by contact lenses or it could be a surgical treatment where you can do a resect or recess surgery of the superior rectus so one operation is called as the fadens operation with superior rectus recession and the other one is a large recession or loosening of the superior rectus muscle and the other option is your resection or tightening of the inferior rectus so as it will not allow the eye to go into a hyperdeviated state or a procedure which can combine both recess and resect so this is one example which is seen here so this is the same patient which we saw so after a surgery of 10 mm of superior rectus recession if you see there is no more elevation seen in the patient's eye so this is the treatment modality which is commonly done in your dissociated vertical deviation so i hope this video would be useful for you to understand what is dissociated vertical deviation uh, it's uh, clinical characteristics its measurement and how it is being treated for more videos on to binocular vision please follow our channel uh, optometry with tarik and thank you for your patient listening we'll be back soon with more videos on to lectures of binocular vision thank you and goodbye